and we're back. <laughs> it's been a really long time. Um, I am going to do these so that I do a lot less editing. So I'm going to have some like stupid burbles in what I'm saying and like kind of like right now. Anyway, it's really stupid hot. It is the end of June and we're having a heat wave. So that's part of the reason I'm down here at the bottom of my driveway uh, looking at the willows that I cut last fall. Wait, was it this spring? You know, time has no meaning anymore. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna go check those out. Um, I looked at them the other day. I didn't see a whole lot of great stuff down here, but the reason I'm doing this, and I'll walk and talk here on Willow's Vintage Homestead. The reason I'm uh, doing this today is because it is so stupid hot, and uh, I'm afraid these are just gonna dry out and become irredeemable. <laughs> so, uh, also, you know, I've kind of got my eye on these guys, these bracken ferns. Remember in a previous video, I described how they just make this dense carpet. Well, here we go. Um, this is kind of near Jordan Creek. So they get a lot of water. Of the Well, this is, you can see this is south, basically south. Here's east, south, west. So they have some shade from this big pine tree. But anyway, the roots of these are used in uh, Miwok basketry, and that's my interest in these guys so I may come back at some point and uh, dig a few of these up see what their roots look like but I'm here today for the willows because I'm afraid if I wait any longer they're just going to get so dried out that I can't strip the bark off of them and what am I going on about okay so <laughs> a lot's happened since my last video clearly and I will uh, talk as I'm cutting let's see if there's anything of any good length here uh, it's a little short but I might find some stuff as I kind of dig around. But see, this is where I cut before. You can see here's my cut, and then here's what's grown up from that cut. So um, if you want nice long weavers like this guy, um, you gotta find, well, you find them or find where there's been damage to the plant or um, where you have caused damage to the plant, like cutting. Okay, so. So what's been going on? Well, we made a 60 minute pilot for a show. We are still editing that together. Um, in the meanwhile, I've taken some mental health breaks. <laughs> uh, it was it was crazy. I mean, you know, film shoots always are um, a bit intense. This one was at my house, uh, so it was intense. <laughs> um, and also, um, I've been doing a lot of volunteering at the local museum, the Northern Mariposa County History Center. Where is the bottom of this branch? Oops. There it is. So, um, and I've got the incredible honor of, uh, I've got the incredible honor of being allowed to rework their Miwok exhibit in anticipation of opening in September, reopening the whole museum in September, finally, after almost two years being closed, right? Well over a year. So I've kind of gotten back to those roots again. You know, full disclaimer, I am not a tribal member. Um, I do not claim to be. I have learned traditional skills from the local people, especially a basketry from Julia Parker, who is uh, primarily Kashia Pomo, which is from the coast, but she weaves in a uh, local Miwok style also. So I have uh, I've learned very much from her, not just basketry, but a lot of things from Julia, to whom I am forever grateful and uh, blessed to know her. So um, it's kind of got me circling back around as I posted on my Facebook to um, get back to basketry, which I've been doing since I was 16. I kind of put it aside. I've done some other things, but it's kind of time to come back to that, I feel like. so. And I'm almost out of willows, <laughs> so that's part of what I'm, I'm doing here. Um, and part of what I was talking about earlier is um, if it gets any hotter, I'm not going to be able to get the bark off of these new shoots. And that's the part that I need is to get the this green strip this green bark off you'll see me doing that in a minute here um, so that I have something to use in a year because you let this cure for a year before you use it that's tradition and it makes sure that your materials are you know cured that they're they're ready to use and 
I'm looking for the longest, straightest things without little branchlets that I can find. And there just aren't a whole lot. These have branchlets. They start off great and you start looking up and you're like, oh heck, <laughs> there's branches there. So, But with regards to the museum, um, I'm hoping that I can do some um, basket demonstrations and other local cultural uh, skills at the museum upcoming. I'm hoping that that can come together. Um, but I donated quite a lot of my own basket materials to the museum, so I'm realizing <laughs> I don't have enough to, to finish this one that I'm working on, which I'll show you in just a second. And even though I cut these earlier, they're not that long. So I'm trying to find enough that will sustain me through, um, you know, next Next year, I'm looking forward to next year with this. Right now, I'm going to go over to the creek. What's left of it at this time of year. There's some nice mugwort mixed in with the ferns. So pretty. So the mugwort smells wonderfully. I don't know if I've mentioned before or not. I think I have that it's uh, used in sweat lodges. Um, it's used uh, as, as kind of like, you know, you think of white sage as a native uh, plant that's for purification and, and, and all that. Um, yeah, see, there's not even any water here at all. But this is a good spot usually, so I'm just checking to see what we got here. Um, in California, this is in the Artemisia family, this plant, and is used uh, in sweat lodges and uh, much in the same way as the white sage that you, you get in bulk at your new AG store. Um, but that's what we have in California as our sacred purifying plant. Um, yeah, I'm just literally walking on the creek bed and there's just no water here at all. Uh, yeah, usually this is a good spot to find really big weavers, but I'm just not. Oh, here's a columbine. How nice. They like moist creek areas. How pretty. Native columbine in the dappled shade here, so pretty. Uh, yeah, I just really don't see a whole lot of weavers, and that is not good news for me. I'm, the search continues, because I have to get quite a lot of them, because I need them for both the rod of a coiled basket and the wrap of a coiled basket, and it takes quite a lot of material to make any size of a basket at all, which I'm looking to do kind of a large one this time. Hooah. Um, yeah, there's some like way over in there, but this is too hard to get at them. Shoot, usually this is a good spot. Not this year, and I wonder if it's, you know, maybe partly a drought thing or a climate thing or a heat thing or who knows. But let me try one other spot close by here that usually has really good ones. Okay, let's see how we do on this lonely stretch of road. Usually this is a good spot right near the road because cars will hit the tree and knock a branch off and you'll get some good weavers out of it. Yeah, they're short here too. Again, that is not good news for me. Well, here's where I made a cut previously. There's a couple here that are usable. Um, you don't want to watch me sitting here cutting branches for the next... <laughs> whatever 20 minutes in the sun with my eyelids sweating so I'm going to just uh, oh here's a good one back here see nice and straight uh it's getting to it that's the thing it's in the blackberries but ah there we go so there's a good long one so I'll get that guy and I see a few in there um all right so I'm gonna do that for a hot minute and literally a hot minute it's stinking hot out here and I will be back in just a moment. So what I ended up doing was getting ones that are actually thicker than I really wanted because they do have branchlets up at the top, like this guy. But what I'm hoping is I have enough of this part to weave with um, because if you have branches in here, I mean, as you might imagine, this will cause a weak spot and a little hole in your weaving materials because you want your nice beautiful, perfect, straight, you know, no knots, no leaves, no nothing. This is what I've been working on, this is what I'm currently working on. It is willow and redbud. Here's the redbud. It always curls up like this when it dries. It's 
gets a little crazy. Uh, this is also willow and red, but this one I made 20 years ago. So you can see the difference in color, right? Where it just will naturally turn a golden hue. So you can tell newer ones are going to be this lighter color. You know, older ones are darker. Um, I was asked previously on making a basket, how do you start the basket? Um, what I do with the small amount of uh, sedge root that I have remaining, which wasn't used a whole lot in this area, but was used some, is uh, there's the start of this older basket. You basically make a knot out of uh, three small strands of the sedge root. So just literally just, you know, take and tie an overhand knot and then start coiling into the same knot hole over and over until you, you know, you, as you're, you're, you have your tails of your knot and you kind of fold those around and then work those in as your core. And then once you're out of that, right, then you start with the willow rod. Then you, you know, you just push the, the pointed sharpened willow rod into the, the coil that you've run out of essentially, and then just keep continuing with the willow rod. So starting a basket is actually one of the easiest things. It's kind of fun to do. So um, that's, how you start that. I don't have um, the stuff right here this minute to, to show you how to do a start. But anyway, I'm just talking about other different things like it's that time of year to start stripping down willow branches. And so let's see, I've got like some fairly large ones. I picked ones that did not, the, the bark isn't, it, the bark is still green. The bark is not yet turning into hard bark. This one's about as big and as close to that as we're starting to get so this may be a little bit difficult to strip down and it does have quite a lot of branches but what I'm thinking is that hopefully I can split this down and get enough of a length out of it that I mean you know this is what probably at least two feet of uh, weaving material that I can use to go between because with the pattern that I'm doing on this one it's going to be um, uh, triangles that go small and then that go bigger right and then go small and then go bare so that's the design that i'm working on on this one um man it's so hot <laughs> um so i don't need like a super long run of length for this particular one something like this yeah you super do need like a lot of length to go between that span of the of the decoration but this one not so much so i mean i was because all it was was the willow but now i've gone to the pattern part of the cooking basket speaking of cooking baskets so there's different forms different shapes this is kind of like a little miniature cooking basket so this one is going to be like this but like way bigger i hope <laughs> i'm hoping to make it you know about whatever that is what 14 16 inches something like that so this is a really 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 good book um for book recommendations um if for the baskets of this area this is the deep dive i mean this is the book to get by craig bates um he was one of the main interpretive uh department people at yosemite national park and he absolutely knows everything pretty much there is to know about this um let me show you different shapes so here's some different assorted shapes um, that you might encounter in baskets, you know, cooking baskets, shapes, and uh, this kind of a storage basket. They're calling this a gift basket. The designs used to be very plain in, in the olden days. Um, they were much more plain, and then later on, um, as time went on, let me... They, used, they were getting more fancy for sale because they realized, oh, hey, I can make a lot of money <laughs> selling these to white people. And that's what they did. So they got, you know, fancier with the designs. Um, so this book is a mixture of uh, um, Mono Lake, Paiute, Mono, Indian, and uh, uh, Southern Sierra Miwok. Um, you know, just uh, probably a little bit of Central Miwok. In this area, this is, this is kind of a, a melting pot. I have this page marked because I have actually found a basket almost identical to this in the collections in the uh, Coulterville Museum. The Northern Mariposa County History Center has a basket almost exactly like this, but even more interesting because it has uh, a special weave. And I'll put the picture up. Uh, Mono Lake Paiute Cooking Basket. So there's one of these in our collections. And then um, the, you know, regular 
cooking basket of this type. Um, so anyway, so that's the shape that this is going to be ideally, hopefully, basically this, but bigger. Um, while I was there yesterday, um, they were having a silent auction and a sale, and I stumbled on. They had three strands of these old Italian glass trade beads. Of course, I had to have them. Um, they are quite old. Um, I was very happy to get three strands of these very, very long strands. This is one strand looped for the princely sum of $20, which I was very happy about. They still have these neat loops on the ends and the old string that they were used to uh, display for sale like hey you want to buy these then um you know they were hanging on the wall like that around a nail or something um yeah they're a little fragile yeah they can be quite sharp <laughs> so be careful when using these if you happen to find some um i think it's where do i usually get vintage beads from like this a happy mango is a good place um I think that's probably the best for actual vintage trade beads is probably Happy Mango. So look them up uh, if you want to get similar beads. I'm not going to put beads on this because the cooking basket did not have beads on it. It was utilitarian uh, entirely for cooking acorn mush, as I've explained in my previous uh, video. So um, let's get to, let's get stripping. So let me see how well I do. First off with this big guy. This is my usual knife. I've just sharpened it. Yay. So, but the first thing I got to do before I, yeah, before I um, split this down smaller is just peel the spark off. And it is, it's fighting me just a little bit, but as you can see, it's, it's mostly coming off pretty well. The water is still up in the branch. And so I can um, just kind of, you know, grab the end of it here and pull and most of it will come. Not all of it. I still have to do the rest of it with my knife, um, but get as much of this as you can, starting at the growing end, right? Working your way up toward the leafy end. Strip as much as you can with your hands because it will save you so much time and save your knife because it will dull your knife really quickly to have to deal with this stuff. So good, so this is coming off fairly easily. Um, Let's go up as far as I can. I'm starting to get these little branchlets, right? And they're already breaking the flow of what I'm trying to do. So you're, there's going to be a little bit of bark left on here. See how green this is? And we want this color, right? So what it is is that the the juice, the the sap, the the <laughs> the stuff underneath the uh, the the bark directly is this greenish color. So you're going to need to scrape that off of there or else it's going to discolor your finished thing. Once it's dried on there, it's really hard to get off, so now is the time to do that. So you're going to be processing these. It is not a fast, speedy thing. <laughs> this is one of those meditative tasks that, you know, you should slow down and relax as you're doing this. So I do. That, this is just how I do it. I don't know that it's the one perfect correct way to do it. That is just how I do it. So and then I'm going to flip it around. See, I've got that. I don't know if you can see in the camera there. This has been scraped clean. This still has the sticky, wet, you know, juice sap in there. Um, I'm going to put this up so you guys can see, hopefully. Often I'll lay it down on here and kind of do it this way. You can also do it this way. It's just sort of personal preference. But... You're going to do a lot of this, and then once you get up to the top, generally you want to start at the bigger end and work your way up. You really don't want to do that too much. I mean, you can at this stage. You never want to do that when you're doing the little small stuff because it will just tear it right back up. So that they used to say, you scrape the willows until they sing insert funny joke about my name here but <laughs> la 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 <laughs> but i found a shady spot it's not too completely horrible here so i'll take a minute to to do this so this has got so much of the green sap you can kind of just you know, hold it at like a, you know, perpendicular 
and just kind of work that green stuff off of there. That little wee green stuff. And you can come back and kind of smooth it out heading the right direction. See, I'm being very careful, very, very lightly, gently kind of removing these little branchlets. I'm not just, you know, cutting the heck out of it. I'm just kind of like skimming the knife along the surface and letting the knife edge do the work. I'm not pressing down really at all. Getting it to where I can remove this green sap. And partly I'm doing this outside just because there's gonna be leaves everywhere. Like some of these, um, you're gonna wanna just kinda take and pull it backwards, strip the leaves off, discard, and then in fact then I just for sake of speed, uh, just go ahead and strip this guy down. Uh, so you can see I gotta split it because these aren't gonna be the center rods, um, like this is that or the like the center rod there. This is, um, th those you leave whole, right, obviously. But uh, this, I'm going to split for weaving stems, we weavers that go around. So they need to be thin. And so I have just misplaced. There it is. <laughs> Where is everything? Uh, the thing that I'm working on. So uh, let me get the bark off here. This is like one of the smallest ones by comparison, so there's not much meat here to <laughs> to work with. But again, just very gently, very, very gently. When it won't just pull off by itself, take its little suit off. Um, you can very, very, very gently, you know, scrape it. So, and here's this end. I'll do this technique so you can see what that looks like. I'm just trying to get that sap off of there so it's not green. Now before this dries out, and I had this problem yesterday, I was doing this with red bud actually yesterday, um, the resulting branchlet, uh, branchlet, well you know what I mean, the, the, the weaver of red bud is much more white, it stays much more white, it doesn't go as um, as yellow as the willow does. So some people will actually use that as another color, so you've got kind of this golden and then the red or the red bud, black or bracken fern if you have it, and then kind of a white ivory of um, red bud. So that is a nice color option if you want to add more color. So I've got my little split here that I made with my knife just a little bit, and then I'm just gonna ideally do what I did before on those big weavers from last time. But this time, for one thing, I don't have to soak them in the creek because they're green. So what I want to do uh, is control the split, kind of steer it, and pull. And voila. So what I want to do this time though is split it even further so that I'm not I don't have big stiff hard to bend things because what that was doing because they were so thick that it was hard to um, then get them wet to split them again because I have to, I can't just lay them in my bathtub or whatever because I have so much iron in my water that it will stain everything black. I mean, that's part of why the center of this has a little bit of discoloration is because I was trying to use my water here and guess what? It, it discolored the bottom of it. So I'm only using bottled water or creek water and I don't want to put creek water in my mouth. <laughs> So I'm mostly using bottled water to soak these things in uh, in a basin. So, which means that I need to um, strip this even finer so that it will end up in a coil like this so that I can soak it in a, in a round basin. Because if it's super long, like if I dry it like this, it's, it's gonna be really stiff and I can't coil it around and soak it properly, so. So anywho, um, that's the process. That's what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing. <laughs> um, I am very excited to show you more about what I've been up to at the museum now that the uh, Barrett Room soft opening was yesterday. Um, now the work on the displays really begins. So I gotta 
uh, get down there and um, we may have some more basket acquisitions which I am really excited to see I hope we can get those before September um, the Shively family that donated the Barrett room I saw her yesterday and she was also um, interested in donating yet more baskets. She's like, yeah, no, I've got even more Barrett Room baskets in my house and would you like them? I'm like, well, why, yes, of course we would like to have them for the museum. How incredibly generous. <laughs> and then another lady that uh, uh, works with the museum, Sharon, um, said, oh yeah, I've got some old baskets. They're just sitting in a box. Um, I'll bring them by and maybe the museum can have them. And I'm like, <laughs> wow so I mean how I'm gonna fit all these in that case I don't know but I'm gonna darn well try so anyway that's what I've been up to um, I think I will call it there for now um, and uh, pr I'm trying to do more frequently so thanks for being patient thanks for everything that you do in your lives for other people um, you know always act with kindness always uh, Think of the world around you. Think of, uh, you know, future generations and be that good person you want to see in the world. So anyway, signing off. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff that they say to do on YouTube. And uh, I'll see you next time on Willow's Vintage Homestead. Bye.